Hey there. So have you ever heard the story of how George Washington, the big man himself, went on a quest for supplies that played a crucial role in winning the war? Yeah, it's a bit like a historical adventure, and it all started in a place called Valley Forge. It was the winter of 1777, 1778, and let me tell you, it was brutal. The Continental Army was camped out at Valley Forge, and the situation was grim. They were low on food, clothing, and pretty much everything else. Imagine trying to fight a war while you're freezing and starving. Not the best conditions, right? Washington knew they couldn't continue like this. The morale was low, and something had to be done to keep the army together. He needed supplies desperately. Now you'd think supplies would be easy to come by back then, but it was a nightmare. The British had control over many of the supply routes, and the local farmers were hesitant to sell their goods because they weren't sure if they'd get paid. Enter Reading, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Reading was a bustling little town back then, and it was a known depot for military supplies. Washington got word out that there were supplies of much needed goods there, and he decided to take action. He sent out scouts and devised a plan to get those supplies. Now this wasn't just a simple errand run. The journey from Valley Forge to Reading wasn't exactly a walk in the park. It was about 40 miles and the roads were treacherous, especially with the winter weather. But Washington was determined. He needed to ensure his men were fed and clothed or they wouldn't stand a chance against the British. Washington chose a trusted officer, General Anthony Wayne, to lead the mission. Wayne was a tough, reliable guy, just the kind of person you'd want in charge of such a crucial task. Washington gave him clear instructions to get to Reading, secure the supplies, and bring them back as quickly as possible. Wayne and his men set out braving the icy roads and the cold winds. The journey was tough. But these were seasoned soldiers, and they pressed on. As they approached Reading, they had to be cautious. Even though Reading was supposed to be a friendly territory, they couldn't risk running into any surprises. When they finally reached Reading, they found the town bustling with activity. Wayne's men quickly got to work. They gathered flour, meat, clothing, and other essentials, packing everything onto wagons. The people of Reading, once they understood the dire situation at Valley Forge, were eager to help. They donated what they could, and some even volunteered to accompany Wayne's men back to Valley Forge to fight. The journey back was just as challenging. The wagons were heavy with supplies, making the trek even slower. But the thought of their comrades at Valley Forge suffering and waiting kept them moving. They had to get those supplies through. Meanwhile, back at Valley Forge, Washington and his men were anxiously waiting. Every hour felt like a day, but Washington never lost hope. He kept his men motivated, encouraging them to hold on just a little longer. And then finally the news came. Wayne and his men were on their way back with the supplies. When the wagons rolled into camp, it was like a scene out of a movie. The soldiers cheered, and there were even a few tears. The supplies brought a renewed sense of hope and determination. They now had food to eat, warm clothes to wear, and the promise of better days ahead. Washington knew this was a turning point. The supplies from Reading not only kept his army alive, but also boosted their morale. It gave them the strength to continue fighting, and it reminded them why they were fighting in the first place. They weren't just fighting for themselves, they were fighting for freedom for a future where they would have to endure, where they wouldn't have to endure such hardships. So next time you think about Valley Forge, remember the trip to Reading. It's a testament to the resilience and determination of Washington and his men. It shows that even in the darkest times, a little hope and a little grit can make all the difference. And who knows, 
Without that trip to Reading, the story of the American Revolution might have turned out very differently. And do you know a very famous singer today who was born in Reading, Pennsylvania? Let me give you a hint. She has a video on YouTube called Blank Space, and in that video she carves the name Sean into a tree. I know another Sean, and his last name is Bean, and he played Zeus in the Percy Jackson movie. Taylor Swift is tied to Zeus in the Hellenic simulation in the following manner. Her last name represents the swiftness of an owl when capturing their prey. Taylor is also rumored to have made a song about Adam Young, a member of the band Owl City. The name of the song was Enchanted, and it was released on Aphrodite's birthday, which is in the Hellenic sim simulation, October 25th. Taylor is also in Capital One commercials. When I think of Capital, I think of the Treasury in Washington, D.C., and the one stands for the $1 bill with Washington on it. Also think of where Taylor Swift was born. The city was crucial in the Revolutionary War, and although it is pronounced Reading, it is spelled like reading, and when you read it a lot, you gain vast wisdom. Therefore, Taylor Swift represents Athena, the goddess of wisdom and war in the Hellenic simulation. Athena is the daughter of Zeus, and Zeus's sacred bird is also swift, for it's, it's the eagle, and is now on the reverse side of a Washington quarter. In fact, it's our national bird, and has been since 1782. Think of Valley Forge for a minute also. The god of the forge in Greek mythology is Hephaestus, and he is a son of Zeus. Could it be that George Washington was also a son of Zeus? Absolutely, and that was the start of the Hellenic simulation in the United States of America. Stay tuned for another podcast on the Hellenic simulation. Please subscribe and join my VIP mailing list at https www.jeffstips.xyz backslash Hellenic Sim. Have a great night.